السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Today إن شاء الله we're going to solve Cambridge exam May June 2023 paper 62 Let's start it Question 1 Hot powdered lead oxide is reduced by methane Methane is a flammable gas The product of this reduction uh, are lead metal, steam and carbon dioxide Here we have the diagram represent the apparatus used to reduce lead oxide using excess methane gas methane introduced from here where here we have inside the tube the hot lead oxide powder and the gases produced passes through this tube here at the point b in the ice bath and the waste gases released from here number one name the item labeled a of course a is a beaker draw an arrow to show where the apparatus should be heated of course here it is mentioned we have hot powdered lead oxide so we should heat the lead oxide we will draw an arrow below the lead oxide represent heat explain why powdered lead oxide is used and not a large lump of lead oxide of course the powder have a larger surface area so the rate of reaction will be higher so we will use powder to increase the rate of reaction explain what happened at the point labeled b here at the point B, steam produced is passed through the tube where it cooled by the ice so it will condense to form water at the point P. So ice cools the steam produced and the steam condensed to form water. The waste gases contain methane. State why methane, the waste gases contain methane, should not be released into the laboratory. Here it is also mentioned that methane is a flammable gas, so it should not be released because it is flammable, it may catch fire in the laboratory. Question 2. A student investigates how the rate of reaction between aqueous iron 3 nitrate and aqueous sodium thiosulfate change with temperature. So we will study the effect of temperature on the reaction. The student does five experiments using the apparatus shown in figure 2.1. Here we have the beaker, we will add the aqueous iron 3 nitrate in the beaker, then we will add 5 cm of the sodium thiosulfate. The beaker will be on a branded sheet or the sheet has a branded text and we will look through from the top of the beaker where uh, to record the time when the text becomes visible. So the first experiment here we have uh, using measuring cylinder. 50 centimeter cube of iron 3 nitrate in a beaker and we will put the beaker on a branded text like shown here then we will use another measuring cylinder to put 5 centimeter of aqueous sodium thiosulfate and at the same time we will start stop clock so the time will be calculated from the beginning of the reaction just uh, when you start at the sodium thiosulfate use the thermometer, thermometer to stir the content of the beaker and look from the above above the beaker to see to record the time when the branded sheet becomes visible and we will record the final temperature when the sheet becomes visible okay we will rinse the beaker to make the second experiment same steps the aqueous iron nitrate in the beaker then we will add the um, five centimeter size sulfate but first we will heat increase the temperature of the beaker by 5 cm cube so now the iron nitrate have 5 cm degree higher than the first experiment we will repeat the same steps again record the time needed for the sheet to become visible and record the final temperature when the text becomes visible the third experiment the temperature of the iron 3 nitrate will be higher by 10 degrees and the fourth experiment the we will increase the temperature by 15 degrees uh, finally in experiment 5 the temperature increased by 25 degrees celsius here we, we have to complete the table the time taken for the text to become visible and the temperature of the solution when the text becomes visible to read the uh, stop clock diagram and the thermometer diagram here we have the the inner circuit for the minutes 
so here we have one minute and 56 seconds this will be 116 seconds record re remember that all uh, all with the time in seconds the second uh, experiment we have one minute and 20 seconds this will be 80 seconds then here we have one minute and uh, nine seconds so this will be 69 here we have only 46 seconds we didn't reach to one minute the inner circle have zero reading so it is less than 60 seconds it's 46 as shown in the outer circle and the final experiment we have zero minutes and only 21 seconds so the total time will be 21 the thermometer reading here for the first experiment 20.5 the second 27 third one 30 and the fourth one 37 finally 46.5 degree celsius uh, here we have to write the suitable scale on the y-axis and plot the results on experiment one to five to draw a smooth curve of best uh, to use the suitable scale for the y-axis, the y-axis represents the time taking for the text to become visible. Here the time starts from 21 until 116, so we, we should cover until 120. So I give 20 divisions, like start here from 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 and 120 to cover all the time until the highest one, which is 116 seconds. This is the scale on the y-axis. Then I plot the five experiment or the five points as shown here, connected to make a smooth uh, curve. Deduce the experiment in which the rate of reaction is the fastest. Of course, experiment five, where we have the highest temperature. Here, experiment five increased by 25 degrees Celsius. So the time was only 20 seconds. The shortest time means the reaction is the fastest so experiment 5 is the fastest use your graph to predict the temperature of the solution when the text become visible after 55 seconds you have to show your work on the graph here we will go to the y-axis determine the position of 55 seconds here and we will draw a line to uh, intersect the, the curve then go down here to record the time needed for the printed text to become visible which is 34 seconds you have to show your work on the graph like we've done here with the blue line so the temperature is 34 degrees explain why wrapping the beaker in a cotton wool after it has been heated will improve the accuracy of the result obtained of course wrapping the beaker will insulate the beaker so we will reduce the heat loss that means the temperature of the beaker will remain constant for a longer time. That will give more accurate result because we are measuring the effect of temperature. So obtaining a constant temperature for a longer time, that will make more accurate results. Explain why it would be an improvement to measure the volume of aqueous iron nitrate in a burette rather than the measuring cylinder. The 50 centimeter cube should be measured with a burette rather than a measuring cylinder of course the burette is more accurate than a measuring cylinder so this will be an improvement suggest why it, it will not be an improvement to add the aqueous sodium sisulfate using a pipette so imagine here that we have the iron 3 nitrate in the beaker and we will start adding the sodium sisulfate using a, pi a pipette the pipette is so slow that we will have drops of the sodium sisulfate so the reaction will start with these few drops before the total amount of sodium sulfate has been added because the pipette is sorry the pipette is too slow. So using pipette because the pipette is slow, slow, uh, so slow in adding the reaction will start while we're still adding the sodium sulfate. Suggest why the aqueous sodium sisulfate must be added after the aqueous iron nitrate has been heated and not before it's heated. That means we should heat the iron, nit iron 3 nitrate first, then we will add the sodium sisulfate and not 
the opposite. Because if we add the sodium sisulfate before heating, that means the reaction will start at a lower temperature and the temperature will rise or will increase while reacting because we will heat after reacting. So the reaction will start at a lower temperature and then the temperature will increase while the two reactant start reacting together. Describe how the results of the experiment would change when the experiment is repeated using a 250 beaker in the place of 100 centimeter beaker. Explain your answer. Using 250 centimeter cube beaker than 100 centimeter beaker, that means we will use a larger beaker. Having a larger beaker, so the height of the solution will be smaller than in the smaller beaker. We have in the 100 centimeter cube beaker, we will have a higher solution than that in the 250 centimeter since we will we are looking from the top of the beaker so in the bigger beaker or in the 250 centimeter we will have a smaller height to look through so the less depth means that we we, we will see the printed text faster that means the time will decrease so the change in the result will be the time will decrease because in the bigger beaker, which is 250 centimeter cube, the beaker is larger. So the height of the solution will decrease. That means less depth to look through and we can see the printed text faster. That means the time will be short. Question three, a student test uh, two substance solution F and solid G. First, we will test solution F, shows the test and the student observation on solution F. First, we will make a flame test on the first portion of solution F. We get light green color. The green flame test indicate the presence of barium ions. The second portion of the solution F add 1 cm sodium hydroxide and vesovaluminium foil. Warm the mixture gently and test for any gas produced. Evervescence was seen and the gas turned the red litmus paper to blue. Of course, this is the test for nitrate ion. N giving a sodium, adding, sorry, adding sodium hydroxide with aluminium foil. This is the test for nitrate ion. Giving uh, ammonia gas because ammonia will change the red litmus paper to blue. So the test for the presence of nitrate, we have nitrate ions and the gas produced is ammonia gas. The third portion of solution app, we will add nitric acid followed by aqueous silver nitrate. No change, that means we have no halide ions. Because we use silver nitrate to test for halide, if we have no observations, so there is no halide ions. Describe how the flame test is used in test 1. How we can make a flame test? We will first clean the platinum wire, then we will dip a clean wire into the solution app, Put it into a hot blue flame to form from the Bunsen burner. So we will use a clean platinum wire, dip it in solution F first, then dip it in a hot blue flame from a Bunsen burner. Identify the gas given off in test 2. Here in test 2 we have ammonia gas. A solution F, of course, we have barium ions and nitrate ions, so solution F will be barium nitrate. State what would be observed if the student add dilute sulfuric acid to another portion of solution F. Of course, sulfuric acid contains sulfate ions and sulfate ions react with barium ions to form barium sulfate. Barium sulfate is insoluble so we can see a white precipitate, the color of barium sulfate. We know that barium sulfate is insoluble so it will form a white precipitate. Then we'll go for test on solid G. Solid G is iron 2 carbonate, as seen here. 10 cm cube of dilute sulfuric acid is added to the iron carbonate, and any gas tested is given off. Of course, adding acid to the carbonate will produce carbon dioxide gas, so the observation will be fizzing of a gas that turns the lime water milky or cloudy. The product from E, aqueous add to the product from E aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise then in excess. Reacting iron carbonate with sulfuric acid will produce iron 
to sulfate plus carbon dioxide plus water. So we will add sodium hydroxide to the product here, which is iron sulfate, which contain iron two ions. That means this uh, iron two ions will react with sodium hydroxide to produce iron hydroxide. Iron two hydroxide is a green precipitate. So the observation will be a green precipitate and of course it will not dissolve in excess. So the product, we will add sodium hydroxide to the product of uh, question E. The product here is iron to sulfate, which will react with sodium hydroxide to produce the green precipitate iron to hydroxide. Uh, the fourth and the last question, a metal polish is a mixture of four substances. The properties of these substances are shown here in the table. First, we have propanol, which is soluble in water and react with nitric acid, dissolve in nitric acid. Second, we have ethanoic acid, which is also soluble in water and dissolve in nitric acid. The third substance, iron 3 oxide, which is insoluble in water and react just when warmed with uh, nitric acid, warm run nitric acid to produce a soluble salt. The last one is silicon 4 oxide, which is insoluble in water and cannot react with dilute nitric acid. So we have to blend an experiment to find the percentage by mass silicon 4 oxide. First, we have to separate silicon oxide from the mixture, then determine its mass. Your plan should include how you will calculate the percentage of silicon oxide. As I've just said, we have to separate it first and then weigh it to calculate the mass. You're provided with a sample of the metal polish, dilute nitric acid, and all common laboratory apparatus. So the idea here to determine the total mass of the polish, then remove all the soluble in, uh, substances, propanol, ethanoic acid, and the iron oxide, to the remaining will be only silicon oxide determined in the mass of silicon oxide then get the percentage of this mass to the original mass or the total mass so first we will use a balance to weigh a known mass of the metal polish the mass of the metal polish will be the total mass of the uh, the mixture then we will put the polish in a beaker and add dilute nitric acid then heat or warm because we have here iron 3 oxide only react to a nitric acid when it is warmed so we will add dilute nitric acid and heat the three first substance will react and dissolve in nitric acid but silicon 4 oxide will not react so we will filter the mixture the residue will be silicon 4 oxide we will wash the residue with distilled water to remove any soluble impurities from the other three substances then we will dry it between two filter papers now we have silicon oxide we can weigh the residue because it contains the substance that we needed which is silicon 4 oxide here we have the mass of the silicon 4 oxide then we have to determine the percentage by mass silicon oxide by dividing the mass of silicon 4 oxide divided by the total mass of the metal polish which is here in step one times 100 this is the percentage of uh, percentage by mass silicon dioxide in the metal polish here we come to the end of our exam like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive all the updates comment down below if you have any questions thank you for watching wish you all best of luck